In 871 AD, the Danish Viking army arrives at the border of Wessex, the kingdom of the West Saxons, after having defeated and subjugated all of the other Anglo-Saxon kingdoms. Now all that stood between them and the complete conquest and subjugation of all the Anglo-Saxon peoples of the British Isles were the West Saxons. The ensuing struggle for survival by the West Saxons continued until they finally won their freedom at the Battle of Eddington in 878 AD. Had they not succeeded, the idea of England as a nation would not have been born. The story of this struggle for life and freedom was first recorded in the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle. Now, the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle was created under the kingship of King Alfred who was the victor at the Battle of Eddington. And thanks to him, he was the creator and the beginning of the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle, which was then re maintained for some centuries after his death. The particular version I'm using in this video is the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle A. And the link at which you can find this is here. And I'll put that in the description below the video. Now, let's have a look at a bit of a picture. So this Danish Viking army called the Great Heathen Army was composed mostly of Danish Vikings, but also contained other elements from Norway, Sweden, and even further afield. Now it lands in East Anglia in 865, and after picking up some horses from King Edmund, which allowed it to travel on out of his kingdom, as he hoped. Uh, they then move north. Uh, they eventually take York in 867, 866. Uh, they then come south again. And these kingdoms, Northumbria, Mercia, um, and then eventually the Vikings return to East Anglia. And these three Anglo great Anglo-Saxon kingdoms are destroyed by the heathen, heathen Viking army. They return to East Anglia, um, where King Edmund, who only a couple of years earlier, four years earlier, had given them um, some horses to help them along their way. They return to East Anglia and take his kingdom from him, killing him along the way. And that is in 869. They then appear on the border of the Kingdom of the West Saxons, the last surviving Anglo-Saxon kingdom, the Kingdom of Wessex. And they appear on the border at 870. And so the year that this uh, reading in this video is focused on is the year 871, in which a number of battles took place, a number of important engagements. So let's see what the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle has to say about that. All right. Warfare in that time was uh, very close quarters. Opposing armies would form shield walls where the shields were interlocked and advanced and then used their spears, axes, swords, sex, that's the knife they held, uh, and other uh, percussion type weapons as well even. Uh, these two shield walls would clash and engage each other over a number of hours uh, until eventually one gave way. Pretty intense as warfare always is and has been. Um, but you can get some sense in this picture here what it must have been like with axes and spears and swords and knives and bow and arrows as well. Okay, so here is the part of the Anglo-Saxon Chronicle written in the script of the time, the insular Irish script. And in the first few words here, Her com se her to redingum on Wessexa and thus umba thoria nicht, ridon toeian earla up, and so on, so on. It reads on, but we'll see in the reading itself. Okay. Her com se her to redingum on Wessexa, and thus umba thoria nicht, ridon toa earlas up, tha ye meta here. Athel Wolf, Alderman on Engela Felder, and him thar with ye fecht, and see ye nam. 
and here the Battle of Reading, or possibly what it could have looked like, an artist's impression, of course. Um, you can see the intensity of the two shield walls engaging with each other, spears approaching, um, a quite an intense environment. As you can imagine, as the two shield walls close in on each other and attempt to determine, force their way through each other. Thus um feawar nicht atharred kuning, and alfarred his barothur thar michle feard torea dingum ye ladon, and with on a hair ye fuchton, and thar was michel wal ye salayen, on ye hawadre hond, and athel wolf aldormon, weard of salayen. And a tha denish and achton while Satoa your wild. The Battle of Reading. Horse mounted warriors throwing spears, and uh, but the shield wall holding its own. But a sense of the view from what it must have been like from behind the shield wall as opponents ride towards you and throw spears. Under thus um feawer nicht ye feacht at a red kuning, and alpha red his barothur with alna thon a hair on ashes dune, and he a waron on tawam ye fulchum. On authorum was bach sedge, and half dinner tha hath nan kuningas. And on authorum waron tha earlas, and tha ye feacht, se kuning atherred, with tha re kuninga ye taruman. And tha re weerth, se kuning bach sedge of salayen, and alpha red his barothur, with tha re earla ye taruman. And the thar wear cedar rock, ear of Salayan, say Alda, and cedar rock, ear, say Yonja, and Ospern, ear, and Farana, ear, and Harold, ear, and the thar herchas, bayen, ye feliende, and fella thuzenda, of Salayanara. And on fair tender waren oth nicht. And the Battle of Ashdown. Another artist's impression. Notice the chain mail suits, the shields, the sex they carry around their waist there, the sword, spear, axes. Pretty intense. Another image depicting King Alfred at the Battle of Ashdown. Clearly the central figure here. And again, another image of the Battle of Ashdown. And this period was also referred to as the Danish Wars, since it was mostly a Danish Viking army. And thus um feawer tiena nicht ye feacht at a red kuning, and alpha red his barothur with thon a hair at Bazengum, and thar tha denishan si a namon, and thus um twa monath ye feacht at a red kuning, and alpha red his barothur with thon a hair at Mertune. And he a waron on toam ye fulchum, and he a butu ye fleam don, and a longe on die sea achton, and a thar weareth Mitchell wal salicht. On ye hawada re hond, and a thar denishin achton wal satoa ye wald, and a thar weareth heach mund bishop of slayen, and a fella goldera mona. And after thisum ye feachte, com Mitchell summor lide, 
and thus over eos tron ye four ather cunning and hair ixode fief yer and his leech leith at winburnan tha feing alfred athol wolving his borothur to wesex na reach and thus umb ane monas ye fecht alfred cunning with alna thona her lutla werde at wiltune and hina longe on dai ye faliumde and tha denishen achton while satoa ye wald and thus ye are sword on nichon folk ye fecht ye fochten with thona her On thu kuna riche besuthan temese, and buton tham the him alfared, thas kuningas, baruthur, and an lipi aldormon, and kuninges. Theenas oftarada onoridon, the mona ne rimde, and thas yeares waren of salayena, nichon eorlas, and an kuning. And thu yeer namon wesseaxa farith with thona her. And picture King Alfred leading his forces at the Battle of Ashdown, the central figure here with the axe. And let's have a look at some more imagery. Two shield walls closing with each other, and the intense ferocity and aggression required to do so is depicted here, as you can imagine quite an impressive sight to be moving towards an enemy's shield wall and here the shield walls closing and the tightly packed ranks with their weapons intent on holding their position against your shield wall it would be quite an intense environment to be in and here having closed again completely and with shields Locked, spears thrusting, swords, axes, in the complete engagement. Extremely full on. Very high energy, high intensity, high aggression, high adrenaline. And history being decided by these battles.